Hi guys, just a quick video to show why I use a Sony Nex to Nikon lens adapter. Okay, here's a Sony Nex camera. This is the Sony Nex 6. The beauty of this camera is that it obviously comes with autofocus lenses but if you want to, you can buy a, an adapter, which is what's on the end of that at the moment. And that adapter screws onto the camera and allows me to use my old Nikon lenses on the Sony camera in manual focus mode. Likewise, you can get these adapters to suit Canon lenses, Pentax, Olympus, you name it. I obviously use the, the Nikon one because I've got Lots of Nikon lenses. <clears throat> okay, I'll just put that back together again. We don't need that anymore. Okay, so what's on the end of my, what you see on the end of my night vision tube here is a Sony Nex to Nikon adapter. Basically, this front bit here is suitable for attaching a Nikon lens and the inside bit which you can't see is the part that would normally go into a Sony Nex camera. So what I've done here just quickly just so you can see is I've got a, a piece of aluminium about 10 millimeters thick and I made a hole a large hole in it and I pressed the adapter into that and then from the inside I put a couple of screws into it as well and then that just got glued into the housing tube here. So that's a very nice rigid solid mount. Okay, so we've got that sorted out. Now, using this adapter, I can now take a Nikon lens. This is a uh, 50 millimeter F1.4 uh, lens. I can half a turn, it's clicked in, locked in, it's not going anywhere, it's not going to fall out or anything. Um, and now there's my 50 millimeter lens attached to my night vision unit. Now this this is just the, the housing, there's no tube in there at the moment. I've taken a tube out for to use it for something else. This is not my current uh, design either. This is my not my first one but probably my second second or third version. I've now got a much better version again using all metal parts which I've been working on for a while. I haven't had much time to play with it though. I'll probably, well I will show that in another video. Okay, um, the adapter has a little, this particular adapter has a little notch thing here. If you want to remove the lens you have to push, pull back on that thing, on that little notch. Give the lens a half a turn and it comes off. Uh, that's the two halves there and putting it on quick and easy as you can see taking it off quick and easy probably the main advantage of using one of these is occasionally the tube the tube will sit in there and the tube's window sits just about 40 mil 40 millimeters back from that adapter you'll get dust specks on the tube face. They show up as black dots in your, uh, in your picture. So it's very handy to be able to just quickly remove the lens, clean the dust, screw the lens back on again. Another good thing about using a mount is if I find a better lens, so this is the 1.4, if for example I find a f1.2, which I do have, I have found, uh, I can just as easily screw that on. Or if I want to put a telephoto lens on it, I can just as easily screw that on as well. So it takes a little bit of work and a little bit of trouble to actually get an adapter mounted to your housing. But once that's done, it's well worth the effort that you go to. And I mean, well worth the effort. Not only that, it makes your unit look a little bit better, quicker and easier to set up. Um, it's just better all around. Okay, here's another thing you can do, which is what I did originally before I used a lens adapter. 
the first thing I did was I got an old Nikon 35 millimeter camera that wasn't working and I removed the lens mount as you can see that's the lens mount there now I removed that from the camera basically got this other round piece of metal which I can't remember what it was but I found it bought a hole in it and I attached the lens mount onto that and then that just basically presses into your tube housing gets glued in the right spot and uh, there's another way to you know have a uh, original Nikon mount getting an adapter is far easier just buy the adapter put it on and you're done whereas doing this you got to actually do a bit of mucking around to get that done drilling holes and it's not worth the hurt a few words about the adapter itself this particular one as I said is a Sony to Nikon or Nikon uh, lens adapter you can get these to suit Canon lenses uh, Olympus lenses you can micro four thirds you can buy these adapters that will suit pretty much any brand of lens okay let's just quickly talk a little bit about the aperture or the F number of the lens that's an area that again there seems to be a lot of confusion now this particular lens is a Nikon 50mm f 1.4 um, if this was say a, a 50mm f 1.8 that inner glass that's the back of the lens that's the front of the lens that inner glass at the back of the lens would actually be and also the front one too would actually be smaller in diameter and being smaller it will pass less light now all of these lenses have an aperture ring which is what I'm going to play with here and as as I turn the aperture ring you can see that it closes down inside basically that's how you adjust the amount of light that's coming into your camera well that's one of the ways you can adjust the amount of light coming into your camera with the aperture ring now when it's wide open which is there this lens passes the maximum amount of light when it's stopped down it passes the minimum amount of light now the difference between an f1.4 lens and an f1.8 lens is that an f1.8 lens would probably be around about there when it's fully opened whereas the f1.4 actually opens quite a bit larger or bigger uh, if this was an f4.5 it would be smaller again so basically if you had an f4.5 lens that's about as big as it's going to open and there's nothing you can do about it so that lens is actually going to be quite dark now in a camera a photo camera um, it's not so much of a problem but in a night vision system it is a problem because you want the maximum amount of light that's going to go through the lens and get into your intensifier tube to give you a usable image now if you look into the front of the lens you'll see that the f1.8 has got much smaller glass than the f1.4 now we're looking at the front of these lenses you can see the the difference in the amount of glass from one lens to the other now we'll pick up the f1.2 and compare it to the f1.4 you can see the f1.2 has got far more glass again than the f1.4 and lots and lots more glass than the f1.8 if we flip them over the same thing happens on the back of the lens you can see the glass on the back of the f1.2 and the glass on the back of the f1.8 you can see that the glass is very small it's just in the central part there comparing the back of the f1.4 with the f1.8 again you can see a huge difference in the glass this one the back is uh, got a fairly large glass element and that one's got a small glass element surrounded by some black plastic and metal but the actual glass uh, the actual glass element is very small in comparison now this particular lens here will let in far less light than than this one and this one will let in less light than this one so for your night vision unit the best lens to have without any doubt is that one there is a, lets in a lot more light 
but this particular lens is actually quite expensive and even if you find a second hand one like this one it's probably still going to cost you around about the five to six hundred dollar mark so it's, it's quite expensive the reason why they're expensive is obviously they've got a lot of glass more expensive to make and they're harder to find the f1.4 is fairly common very common actually I don't know if you go back in the old SLR film days um, and it was reasonably expensive but these days you can pick something like that up for about between say 150 and 250 dollars second hand these are second hand prices I'm talking of course the f1.8 um, probably around about uh, somewhere between $50 and, and $100 maximum for an f1.8 in fact you can get an f1.8 brand new for about $120 or something $130 I don't recommend you get an f1.8 unless you're on a very very tight budget um, try very very hard to get an f1.4 lens the brand doesn't matter you could get an Olympus one um, you could get a um, Pentax Canon Nikon whatever you like but try to get an f1.4 very very important Okay, just um, a couple more details regarding the lens that you need for your night vision system. I'll try to, I'll use this one here perhaps, probably got a, no, not really. Yeah, maybe this one here. Okay. That ring there is called the aperture ring and what it does, it, it opens or closes well, it opens, it adjusts the amount of light that passes through the lens using a like an iris arrangement in there. So as you adjust it, the opening gets bigger and more light gets through. Now, keep in mind that some of the newer lenses these days, they don't have an aperture ring at all. There's no aperture ring. The reason is that the camera sets the aperture within the camera from the camera. So the aperture ring is not really needed anymore with with any of the uh, modern cameras so a lot of the newer lenses don't actually have an aperture ring um, I, I suggest you avoid buying a lens that doesn't have an aperture ring because it just makes it a little bit harder to use the aperture ring is very handy when you want to control the amount of light coming into your night vision tube for example if you were using it during the day with a filter on it the aperture ring you would definitely be adjusting it to minimize the amount of light coming in so as not to overload the tube. If you've already got a say a 50mm f1.4 lens that doesn't have an aperture ring and you wanted to use it uh, there is still a solution and that is you when you buy the Sony next to whatever lens you've got adapter you can buy them that have got uh, another ring on here which basically it adjusts the aperture of the lens on a lens that doesn't have an aperture ring but it's a very loose sloppy fit and you'll find that you'll touch it and your lens won't be fully open and you won't know about it and you'll be possibly missing out on some something interesting because your lens was actually stopped down a little bit and you didn't know the, the best lenses to use without any doubt uh, are the ones that have got the aperture ring on the lens which is basically all the old ones and they're also the cheaper ones too so another good reason to use that type of lens